All right, welcome to this crossover edition of the Locked On Ole Miss podcast along with the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. John Neighbors in the house from the Buzz in Arkansas and LockedOnRazorbacks.com. I always joke with John, it's like I keep wanting to call it Locked On Hogs. I mean, every, everything about Arkansas, I've, my whole life I've called them the Hogs and Razorbacks just seems like a, a mouthful, John. Yeah, it is, but it makes for a great chant in Razorback Stadium when you got the Arkansas Razorbacks. The three syllables just fit so uh, so perfectly together. But and also the thing is too is, uh, you know, there's there's not really any other mascot in any sport that uh, is a pig, you know, or a Razorback. And and also like, you got different names you could use. It's Razorbacks. You got hogs. You got pigs. They all use them in all different facets. And every time you hear it, though, you know who they're talking about. So it's unique for sure. You know, one of my low-key favorite things in the complete SEC tradition pantheon is the Arkansas Razorback fans calling the Hogs, and on the third time, the players come out. So they're actually calling him onto the field. I, that right there is a cool thing to me. And I also like the William Tell thing that they do. Yeah, yeah. Those are those are kind of I- iconic things where, mm-hmm. like, if you've never heard the Hog call and you go into the stadium and you hear it or wherever you're at, like everybody has the same reaction like this is weird like which i totally embrace and get like yeah it, you're saying woo pig suey it's not common language that we use today like no one says suey unless you're a pig farmer but once you get everybody involved in it and you got the you know the, the perfect time to chance and everything yeah it's it's awesome and sometimes it can even give you the chills depending on the moment that they have to yeah i i enjoyed my trip up to um Fayetteville whenever I was um, working with the Ole Miss football team we went up there of course we were there with Ed Orgeron so I'm pretty sure Houston Nutt may have put him on in that day um, but it was still fun nonetheless anyway the main headline from this game from the Ole Miss perspective and I assume from the Arkansas perspective as well is KJ Jefferson what's the latest on KJ man that has been something that <laughs> It's like I get asked that question by listeners, by people on social media and everything. And it's like, you know, what I know is what we've been told. And what we've been told by Sam Pittman is that he was not healthy enough to go last week. But on Monday, he said that he feels like he's feeling better. He's feeling good. He's going to practice. going to see how it goes. So, you know, there's no sort of evidence of what he's going to do or how healthy he is, at least just yet. Maybe Sam Pittman comes out this week and says something about it. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I believe he does play. I really do. I believe he plays. I believe that this is a game that he really wants to play in, you know, really wants to play well in. And so I would be surprised if K.J. Jefferson's not out there. And if he's not, Uh, Congrats to the Ole Miss Rebels because they're going to get them the victory in Fayetteville. I just feel that way about it. Yeah, kind of a different team. KJ kind of – this is his team. It's stark what the difference is when he plays and when he doesn't play, Um, in fact. But, you know, KJ Jefferson, for those that don't know, is from Sardis, Mississippi, about 40 minutes up the road from Oxford, Mississippi. Begged for an offer from Matt Luke at Ole Miss. It never came. Never came. They ended up, I guess, with um, – I forget what the year what, – what year was that signing class? I believe that was the 2019 signing class, if, if I'm this, mistaken. Yeah, if it's the 2019 signing class, that means John Rice Plumley got the nod over him. Um, and, you know, KJ is going to bank that like all quality athletes do, and they're going to use that as fuel. So if there's any way that he can play, he is going to play this game. Now – the question I have is, everybody says over, it was an upper body injury somewhere in the shoulder. KJ is the physical presence in that running game, him and Rocket Sanders and doing all that. Does this mean that Arkansas is going to have to protect him? Is there going to be more straight handoffs called that just kind of look like a zone read? How will Arkansas handle KJ if he's less than 100%? Well, Arkansas is going to try to handle KJ the way that most normal, you know, people and coaches would. They're going to say, "Hey, you know, let's let's protect you. Let's do, you know, make sure we're doing plays where don't risk anything to you. All of that stuff." But the problem is, and this has been a problem with, uh, well, I wouldn't say a problem, but just the way that KJ plays. That's not always wired. It, you know, he, he's not going to go out there and you know, when he sees if he needs a first down on third and eight, and he's running it after the uh, pass protection breaks down or whatever and he's a couple yards short, he's not just going to go on the ground. He's a physical player. That's how he plays. 
Uh, you know, I, I don't think he really, uh, you know, I don't think he cares about his health, but he also is like, he's a competitor. So they can do that all day long. They can say, hey, KJ, do this, do that, let's do this. But at the end of the day, KJ is going to be KJ. And honestly, that's what you want him to be. You want him to be the best version of himself. So, yeah, I that's the worrisome thing about it is because if KJ can't be KJ. You know, what what, what good is he? You know, but uh, I'll, I'll be curious to see how they handle it and how he handles himself, especially, as you mentioned, wanting this game so badly. Yeah. And if for some reason KJ can't go, um, it was Malik Hornsby against LSU. It didn't go so well, so I guess it was Cade Fortin ended up closing out that game. How do you think the win will blow on that one? Although we're expecting KJ to play. We're, we're going to do that, but who has the advantage? I mean, Cade Fortin, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like Malik Hornsby, and he, the dude's got all-class speed. He's, he's got just – he's incredibly gifted athlete, fastest – probably the fastest player on the team. I'm not kidding. Like, he is that quick. But – in the short things that we've seen from him, I know he played against Mississippi State on the road and had a couple of good plays here and there, but he just can't throw. He, he can't throw. He can't make the reads. He can't make the passes. Uh, the only times that he does really complete passes when he did against Mississippi State was just kind of wide open guys downfield or just you know heaving it up and hoping for the best. He, th- he completed under 50% of his passes, but he threw for like 230 yards against Mississippi State because he was just uh, you know throwing a lot up. And then last week against LSU, he had nothing, absolutely nothing. So I think it would be Kate Fortin. And honestly, I believe Arkansas's best chance would be with Kate Fortin if KJ can't go. I, because not to say that they would win with that with Kate Fortin, maybe just kind of depends on defense and all that. But yeah, I think it's going to be Kate. And, uh, you know, how much confidence do people have in him? I don't think very much. But let's just, uh, for Razorback's sake and Razorback fans' sake, let's hope it doesn't come to that because that would be. That would be something crazy there too, which I'm I'm curious about something for you because you mentioned that you know the headline and obviously the thing is it's about KJ and Arkansas, so is that just kind of where the mindset is for Ole Miss, like where they're like the, this game is strictly based on KJ, like they think if KJ plays and then therefore they're not going to win, is it that type of thing or is it just a matter of hey we we feel confident no matter what, but we feel best if KJ Jefferson's not in there. Yeah, that, that's more what it is. Ole Miss feels pretty good about this game. Although playing in Fayetteville, it's a little bit of a house of horrors for Ole Miss traditionally anyway. Um, I mean, I've seen Ole Miss give up a touchdown on a kickoff return in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So I do not take anything for granted in that stadium. But the well, main headline for Ole Miss is we we are we do feel good. But if KJ plays, we don't think he's going to be a hundred percent. If you just take the temperature of the fan base, he's not going to be what he was in Oxford last year. But Arkansas has a puncher's chance with KJ Jefferson, even an injured KJ Jefferson. If KJ Jefferson was healthy, him and Rocket Sanders in the zone read game is that is just special. And that would be a thing that would be an absolutely terrible matchup for the Ole Miss defense. But as it sits right now, Rocket Sanders is going to be a little bit less effective because you're not going to run KJ to the extent it would, which is honestly going to bail out Ole Miss's defense, in my opinion. And so the other headline for Ole Miss in this game will be Quinshawn Judkins, who is 142 yards from a school record. Um, and rushing yardage is a true freshman. He already set the record for touchdowns in a season. Basically, this is a kid that is in, like, Herschel Walker, Emmett Smith, Marcus Lattimore territory with his true freshman performances. He is an unbelievably special pre- um, player, and if you have any trouble stopping the run, I think he leads the nation in 20-plus yards runs. He is a legit good player with elite lateral movement. That That is Ole Miss's headline in this game is just kind of record watch at this point. Yeah, and it, it was funny because you mentioned uh, playing in Fayetteville. And I, I honestly, this series between these two teams, and maybe we can get into it, but it's insane, these stupid games that happened. Like, last year's game was stupid because mm-hmm. Arkansas did ne- never gave up that many points all season long. And I'd say their defense was great, but – nowhere close to it and then boom that game i mean back and forth six touchdowns by kj jefferson i think matt corral threw for five as well like just wild stuff and then the last time that these two teams met in Fayetteville, matt corral threw six interceptions mm-hmm. six and three of them went to hudson clark alone you know how many picks he has this uh, in his career 
four. probably three. <laughs> the only other one, the only other one happened just a couple of weeks ago. So, yeah, it, it, it's it's insane that, that between these two teams, just how everything happens and plays out. And that's kind of the thing where Razorback fans, rightfully or wrongfully, believe that the past two games against Liberty and LSU, which they lost at home, they would have won if KJ Jefferson was healthy. Now, that's not how it works, but Liberty, you feel like you held them to 21 points. Uh, 21 points in the first half. You shut them out in the second half, and Arkansas just without a healthy KJ making good decisions didn't work out. And then LSU lost 13 to 10, where the offense was so abysmal for Arkansas. Like, those are the things that, again, you, you're not judged on that. It doesn't work that way, but you've got to be able to have your healthy quarterback in KJ. So, I, if KJ's healthy in here, man, it could be one of those wild games where something insane is going to happen, something crazy is going to happen, whether it's overtime or whether it's, you know, a great game. Maybe, who knows, maybe it'll be like a, a, a like a six to three game. You know, you just, you never know what between these two teams, what's going to happen. You know, between Rocket Sanders and Quinshawn Judkins, which are probably the two primaries in this game, this has a potential for a 17 to 13, an old style 1990s, late 80s Ole Miss Arkansas game. It has the potential for that to happen. Cold outside, you got a two quarterbacks that like to physically run the ball. This game could be over in two and a half hours. I mean, it could be that type of a football game Saturday night. Yeah, and I would be all for it because the less time I get to spend out there in the freezing cold, uh, the better. But. Yeah, I, it's just there's a there's something about this this series. Honestly, mm. I think it's an underrated thing. I'm not just trying to call it a rivalry in the same way of you know the Egg Bowl or anything like that. But no one can deny the fact that this series between these two teams is one of the most insane series of, of SEC teams, especially over the past ten years. I mean, you think about the the game in, in Fayetteville where Arkansas shut out Ole Miss when they were number eight thirty to nothing, where that came out of nowhere. Twenty fifteen Hunter Henry Heave. 2016, uh, the Chad Kelly fumble at the end. I know I'm bringing up Arkansas's win. Yes, but he, yeah, seriously, and, man. And then, <laughs> yeah, 20, well, and then in 2017, that was like the only game Arkansas won, and Arkansas came back by 30. But then in 2018, they come, Ole Miss comes to Little Rock and Moore Memorial Stadium, and they were down by like 30 points, and they stormed back and win. And then last, uh, you know, 2020's game, what? last year's game. So it's just going to be – there's something crazy weird that's going to happen, and that's why it's like I don't think – either team blows each other out or anything like that this is going to be a game to where in the late in the fourth quarter it's going to come down to the wire and it's just a matter of who makes the final play yeah and we're going to take a break in just a second but when we come back i do want to talk about that because there's some scheduling assumptions that are about to happen and this this is likely going to become an every other year game as opposed to an every year thing and i do want to talk about that but first i do want to tell you about new genics that's today's show is brought to you by new genics and you know, basically, if you feel like you just can't get into shape, it's not your fault. As men, we age, our body naturally loses free testosterone, the man hormone, and it happens to every man and it can make more life more difficult to stay in shape and be energetic or active. That's because when you were younger, you were at the peak of your testosterone production. So what some have called the winner's hormone or the man hormone, wouldn't it be nice to get that winner's edge again and that old swagger back again? Well, now you can get a, com a complimentary bottle of Nogenics Total T when you text COLLEGE to 231231. If you text now, you can get a free bottle of Nogenics Thermo, their most powerful fat incinerator area ever, with key ingredients to help you get back into shape fast and absolutely free. Again, text COLLEGE to 231231, COLLEGE to 231231. Um, texting enrolls you in recurring automated text messages. Consent not required to purchase. Message and data rates apply. So there is that. Now, also, thank you for making the Locked On Razorbacks and Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So do us a favor. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell for notifications. And, of course, participate in the conversation by commenting down below or upvoting the video itself. Now, John, we were just talking at the end of, about this series and how great it's been. And I will argue, and I have argued for five or ten years, they've tried to pigeonhole Arkansas with rivals ever since they came into the SEC. But the rival that Arkansas had, they always had, and that was the Ole Miss game. And that goes back into the 80s and the 60s. They've been playing forever. So as far as an SEC team, it's been a rival, and it turned into this just great magical drunk game 
that just seem to randomly happen every year where he's like, I did not see that coming. And this is going to become an every other year occurrence because it's assumed that Arkansas is going to get Texas, which congratulations for that. <laughs> that would be good for you guys. Oh, yeah, um, love it. Uh, I think you'll end up with Missouri and yep. potentially, I don't know about Oklahoma or A&M, but I think they might try to Southwest Conference it and church it up a little bit. But at the end, Ole Miss is going to be the loser in that thing because I think Ole Miss is going to have State, LSU, and um, Vanderbilt. So this game is going to be a casualty of that. and I just hate it because so many good memories have come from this game. Well, I'll tell you what, let me, if, you, if you'll indulge me, let me tell you my theory of what I think will happen. This is kind of what I'm hopeful for and something that may make logical sense to where actually Arkansas and Ole Miss play every single year. So hear me out on this real quick. So I think it's inevitable that this SEC slate is going to be nine-game schedule. I think that's what they're trying to move towards. I think that's what they're going to try to end up doing. And you're going to have, of course, little pods, division, however you want to call it. I believe that Arkansas, Missouri, Texas, and Oklahoma are going to be a four-team thing there. And then I believe that A&M, LSU, Ole Miss, and Mississippi State are going to be the other four. And I believe that every single team is going to have those three reoccurring opponents, but also have one permanent game in the conference as well, like every single year. So that way you can still have uh, Auburn play Georgia every year, even though they may not be in the same reoccurring thing. And you'll have uh, – you know, whether it's LSU and, and Florida or LSU and Bama, you know, whoever. And I believe that with Arkansas and Ole Miss, if that was the way that those pods or divisions ended up going, they would be permanent opponents because of the rivalry, because of, you know, Ole Miss, they already got LSU and Mississippi State. There are other rivals in their pod, so they'd give them to Arkansas. So that's what I'd be hopeful for because I'm with you. I think it would be really disappointing and really sad if uh, this uh, the thing with Arkansas and Ole Miss ended because – as of right now, once Oklahoma joins, it'll be different. But right now, Ole Miss is the closest campus. Like Oxford's the closest campus to Fayetteville. I mean, people really? don't real yeah, people don't realize how far off Arkansas is and Fayetteville is from every other school. Now, I think it might be close with that in Columbia, Missouri, but I'm pretty sure that Oxford's still closer. Uh, but yeah, they they need to find a way to keep this going because I think the fans love it. I think Ole Miss and Arkansas like playing each other. Makes for entertaining games. They got a lot of recruiting battles that they'll go through, a lot of connections too. So I'm hopeful that this stays a, a game every single year. I, I really do because, you know, Arkansas doesn't have a true rival. I know we like, we just hate everybody equally, as we like to say. You know, we don't have a true rival. But I think Ole Miss is one that would really make sense and one that maybe could work out that way. Yeah, it doesn't have to be for a trophy or anything. But if you think about the co just the college baseball alone, and this is just so weird that two schools can have that. But college baseball alone, the triumvirate of Arkansas, Mississippi State, and Ole Miss, three schools that's kind of linked. But when it comes to baseball, I know it drives you crazy that Ole Miss and State won a national championship in baseball before Arkansas did. I know that gets at you a little bit. And just the fact that that would happen in those three, and it wouldn't happen anywhere else in the country like it would with those three schools. Yeah, I'll just – give me a second. I'm going to go jump off a bridge real quick with you bringing that up. Trust me. Like, that is something that just kills. Because it's like, you know, that 2018 game in, in the College World Series will be haunted forever. Just catch the foul ball and you win. And you'd have a championship too. But there is that element of it. I think in, you know, baseball especially. Because, I mean, you know, Ole Miss has a ton of baseball fans. Mississippi State does as well. Like, this – as much as it is a football conference, man, we love our baseball here too. And mm -hmm. I think that, like – that's great. And in basketball, I mean, Arkansas is really good, a rich basketball program with tradition and national championships and all that. And I don't really honestly don't know how much Mississippi State Ole Miss fans care as much or as supportive as much as basketball. But uh, in football, it, it's definitely there because we all kind of have – I don't want to you know, make this in any insulting way, but it's like we kind of have a thing where we are small brand schools. Mm -hmm. We are small town schools. We are two states that don't have any professional teams, and college sports is our thing. And so it's kind of like we put everything, our heart and soul and money, to uh, the, the college programs being good. And I think that there's similarities, there's culture, there's a lot of things there that can uh, you can find common ground on between all of us. Yeah, it is, and, and 
before we move on to the last part, officiating. The way in the Southeastern Conference, the top six, we'll say the big six teams, they're always going to get the breaks because Mississippi faced that against Georgia this past weekend. Ole Miss dealt with that against Alabama. And Arkansas did, did that against LSU. And it was, it was egregious. And this keeps happening over and over and over again. It's like death and taxes at this point. I know. It's like tough for Arkansas fans. And I'm, I don't know, maybe same with Ole Miss fans. You know, everyone does that SEC chant. You know, and shows our pride. Sometimes it's a little bit more difficult because it seems like we're always on the short end of the stick, getting screwed over at every turn. Where you know, there's and that and you know, and officiating is one of the biggest ones. I don't know how much of a coincidence it is, and I know that there's going to be blown calls in every game. I think we all understand that, but it's the most overwhelmingly evident, like clear as crystal calls that just always seem to go against us and i mean i'm going to be honest i don't i don't know exactly specifically about Ole miss's you know things in history that went against them but i do know about arkansas and we hold grudges we still remember the 20 or 2009 arkansas florida game down in gainesville when tim tebow was there where arkansas got screwed about 18 times so much so that they suspended the officiating crew after it like and that was when they were number one and arkansas had bobby trino like we remember that we remember uh, you know, like, and that's just in basketball or foot baseball, whatever it is, but we remember those things and we hold those grudges. So it just, it sucks because we, and I'm in, including Ole Miss and Mississippi mm -hmm. State and everybody, like we don't include, put like look at ourselves as being the little brother of the conference. But when you get treated like it all the time, sometimes it makes it hard to think that uh, they actually give a rip about you and they're more about just protecting the big brands in, this, in, the, in the conference as well. Yeah, and right now, when you have Mississippi State that's pretty good, Arkansas that is on the come up, Ole Miss is pretty good, you can see major brands, especially in the SEC West, panicking a little bit right now because their division gets a lot harder when we're decent. And us being good, all of a sudden you end up with Texas A&M spending $100 million for seventh place in the West. You know, you have – you know, LSU, good for them. They, they were able to overcome. Alabama is not going to Atlanta this year. And Auburn is down there with Texas A&M. And in those schools, it affects things because it's not the cakewalk that it normally is whenever when Ole Miss and Arkansas in 2018 was playing in Little Rock for their third win at the end of October or November. You know, it's, it's not the same animal. And – they need it to get back to that because their identity is built on this as well, especially a small town like Auburn, Alabama, or College Station, Texas. It, whenever you deal with that, and you you need to feel like you're better than, I guess, them. You, you need to feel like you're a blue blood and prop yourself up, but the reality is there's no such thing as a blue blood. And all success is fragile. Yeah, and in fact, I, I had a theory last year. Obviously, Alabama won the West last year. But the fact that Ole Miss finished second and Arkansas finished third in that in our division, I think that that set people off beyond. But, like, they could – no, that's not allowed. That, that, sh that cannot happen. Like, it needs to be it needs to be Bama or LSU up there. You need to have A&M up there. You have Auburn up there. But these, these other schools, no, 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 that doesn't need to happen. And it's almost like, yeah, people kind of have such big reactions to those things when, when it does. And so that's where it's like, you know, is it something that's going to be the tide turning? Is it going to be, you know, rules put into place? But I'm telling you right now, what Arkansas's obviously having a struggling year this year. KJ Jefferson hasn't been healthy. I've had injuries. Not making excuses. It's the way it is. But I'm telling you right now, and, and this is for all the old Miss and Mississippi State fans because I don't know about y'all's, but the NIL has changed the game for Arkansas. The end, like Arkansas has so much money. People don't realize it. I mean, the place called Walmart is here, you know, like <laughs> the biggest company in the world. Tyson, uh, Jerry Jones, I mean, have you ever heard of him? He's a diehard Razorback fan. I mean, the amount of stupid money that Arkansas has to spend is incredible. And I think that in basketball and in other sports too, you start to see the recruiting pick up. I think in the transfer portals and things, you'll start to see that too. They'll have to put it together. But I still believe, too, that that's something else that 
programs like LSU, Bama, Georgia, whoever, hate more than anything is the NIL because now they have to have to go into a bidding war with places like Arkansas, like Ole Miss, like wherever, where normally it was just kind of like, no, if we offer you, you come here. You don't even consider those schools. So I'm thinking and I'm hoping that that can continue on and that can continue to build uh, because I think that that's honestly for schools like Arkansas and Ole Miss, smaller schools that may not have all the all the uh, you know tradition and, and and winning that a lot of these other programs do, they may have the money to go along with it to where they can provide and get some really talented players in here as well. Yeah, and another thing is the expanded playoff in college football. Before, when it was a four team playoff, there were six or maybe seven teams that could recruit to the playoff, and the top fifty players went to all of those schools. Now it's going to be a top 20 teams, and those same top 50 players is going to be spread out a little bit more. So in 2025, the best team in the country would not hold a candle to the 2019 LSU team. So it's going to cause parity even a little more to happen. Anyway, before we get started, I, I want to tell you about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all of your sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. If you can see down below, the line right now is Ole Miss is favored by two and a half points. That line and all lines are brought to you by BetOnline.net on this show. The over/under right now is at sixty-one. It jumped five points, five points after um, the photo of KJ Jefferson got released on the internet. So, I mean, Vegas thinks KJ is going to play. What, what are your thoughts on these lines, John? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out because obviously I, I like having some fun with the lines and mm -hmm. looking at them too. I was so shocked where last week Arkansas opened up against LSU as just a two-point underdog, and it was kind of the same thing this week too. And I'm like, man, they, they kind of got it right with LSU, so maybe they know. I mean, people at Bet Online obviously know what they're doing, mm -hmm. but it's it was just pretty shocking where you know Arkansas was able to take care of business last week or at least in some cases cover the spread. This week, I mean, you may be in store for it because they obviously uh, did it right against LSU. It looks like they may have it right against Ole Miss, too. Yeah, and it's I think it's going to be bitterly cold. Now, it's not going to be like Tom Coughlin in Green Bay cold, but it's going, it's going to be cold, and it's going to be uncomfortable for somebody like Lane Kiffin, who is kind of a Southern California guy. Um, so it might be a little bit difficult for him. But, you know, Jackson Darts from Utah, this isn't going to affect him. Um you know, Quinshawn Judkins from Alabama, we might see, but he's going to be running so much, I don't know how cold he's going to be. Same goes for Rocket Sanders and KJ. Yeah. The the hard yeah. one would be the wide receivers. <laughs> yeah, well, and then add to it, at least when I checked the weather last, it's not only going to be around 30 degrees at kickoff, because it is a night game, but it's going to have winds coming from the north at like 10 to 20 miles per hour. So you're talking about – dude, I'm telling you, Mike – might be one of those things that uh, people just uh, you know load up on the cinnamon whiskey and hope for the best <laughs> as they walk in there because it, it's going to be it's going to be I've been to cold games but this, I'm serious this might be the coldest game I ever end up going to. Really? Do they still have the um, temporary bleachers that they just put on top of the stadium down there? No, they got rid of those okay. once they expanded the north end zone and which is really nice by the way. Hmm. Um, once they expanded that, they kind of did away with the uh, temporary bleachers and, and everything too, which is probably good because that yeah, just seemed like a bad idea, especially because there's all students up there and those are the late arriving <laughs> students where they just got out of the frat houses and they probably had one too many. Don't need them up on that high rise up there <laughs> uh, that with temporary bleachers probably just seems something like that's gonna happen. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. It's Bet Online. It's where the game starts. So, John, before we get out of here, I do want to talk a little bit about where we see this going and to give our predictions on the game. I'll let you go first. Yeah, honestly, we're, I'm basing this all on KJ Jefferson being healthy enough to go. That's, that's what I'm basing this entire thing on. So, if, if it doesn't go this way and KJ doesn't play, no one can hold it against me. But I do believe that if K.J. Jefferson is healthy enough to play, I think the Razorback defense, the past two games, have played the best games they have uh, uh, completely. They've only given up one touchdown in the past six quarters, which is saying something because Arkansas's defense was atrocious for the most part in the beginning of the year. I think the defense has turned some corners. I think that they've gotten better. I think that this is senior night, and there's a lot of seniors on this team that want to go out on the right foot. Uh, and I think that K.J. plays – I think it's going to be close no matter what, but honestly, I think Arkansas wins if KJ's healthy. I, I do, just because I think the cold weather is going to be 
tough for both teams. But I think with KJ being there, it'll be a like kind of like a, a jolt for the team saying, hey, this guy's here. My, our guy's here. Now let's get going. Let's go. Let's get let's get excited for it. And I think KJ is going to want this game so badly. He's going to he's going to put together a really good performance. So I think it's close. I think Arkansas ends up winning this one, maybe a final field goal, something like that. But I'll say that uh, ends up being a low scoring game of 21 to 17. Arkansas gets the victory. You know, I tend to agree with you on most everything. I I think Ole Miss is going to come out in my head, and, you know, they're going to pound Quinshawn Judkins. You're going to see Jackson Dart running the football. I think they're going to avoid throwing the ball because this isn't a passing team. I, people were confused about Lane Kiffin. This team runs the ball 70% of the time. Um, in a game like this, they're kind of built for that. And Arkansas's offense – is Taylor made for exploiting Ole Miss's defensive weakness? I told people on Twitter three weeks ago, even before the Texas A&M game, it's like if Ole Miss finishes three and one, I don't ex- I don't assume the loss is to Alabama. I assume the loss is to Arkansas. So I am going to go with Arkansas in a close game because Fayetteville is a house of horrors, and until you win the game in Fayetteville, I'm not going to just assume that you can do it. This this has been a horrible matchup. Um, for years. I think the last time we won was that Houston nut return game in Fayetteville and which, you know, that crazy. So if this game was in Little Rock, different story. This game was in Oxford, different story. This game in Fayetteville, I think that might put them over the edge a little bit. I'm going to take, I'm going to take the hogs in this game. um, 17 to 14. Oh, wow. So, well, that's, if that ends up being a game, I'm with you. It'll be a quick one. So, Mm. um, uh, but yeah, and that's, the running game is going to be interesting between these two. Rocket Sanders had a great stretch of about eight games. In the past two games, he's been non-existent. But the blocking has been terrible for Arkansas too. But you know, I, th- maybe... I think I think KJ affects Rocket. I, I no, I 100 percent believe that. Yeah, yeah. I think because when Malik or whoever's in there, the entire group of defensive players mm-hmm. are like, hey, key on this guy, and you know, just put a spy out on this guy because we don't we don't don't really respect their passing game so no i'm with you i think that's 100 percent the case so man it's it's, it'll be a great game between these teams though i I think that it's going to be entertaining and one for the books and it is crazy that they haven't won since 2008 like that's yeah i was at that game too that was they don't lose in little rock they don't win in Fayetteville. it's the strangest thing yeah yeah well i mean razorback fans will take it i mean they need to get to one more win to get bowl eligible so yeah they can do it against the Ole miss rebels and avenge that loss from last year i think they'll all take that all day long yeah it should be pretty good anyway um thanks for making the locked on Ole miss and locked on razorbacks podcast your first listen today for your second listen today check out locked on sports today from the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insights only locked on can provide it's Locked On Sports Today. It's available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. John, thank you so much for coming by today. Um, safe travels to the game. And, of course, if you go there, stay warm, man. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my best. We're having a gumbo tailgate for this one. So it's going to be a fun time there. Hitting, hanging out in Fayetteville and freezing our you-know-what's off, man. It'll be great. Yeah, it's not in Little Rock, so it's not going to be tailgating on the golf course, right? Yeah, thank goodness for that because that got really <laughs> old and I don't think anybody wants to deal with that anymore. So, yeah, we'll take Fayetteville all day long. Oh, before we get out of here, is that potentially going away soon enough or are they going to have to yeah. play a game? Yeah, I think uh, 2025, they had to amend the contract with War Memorial. And then 2025, they play Arkansas State there. And what's like the first time ever. And so uh, they're gonna, that's going to be the swan song. Uh, they're not going to play any more games there, which they shouldn't. I mean, no. dude. You can't be playing, can't be losing home games to play in a glorified big high school stadium, you know, where the locker rooms are in terrible condition. Like, it's just, it's not what it used to be. So, yeah, after 2025, that'll be the final game, and it's going away. And honestly, I think it's best for the the program for that to happen. All right, John, I will see you later. Safe travels, man. All right, appreciate it, man. Thanks as always. All right.